it's the NQR awards time. So he hasn't labeled the graph dynamic compliance, but what he's done is he's put the graph underneath a section describing dynamic compliance. And so naturally what candidates do is that they look at this graph here and they go, oh, this is a dynamic compliance curve, but it's not. This is more a static compliance curve. This is the graph from Chambers, and this is why this graph here is confusing, because they've drawn the static compliance curve correctly. And remember what I said, static compliance curve, residual volume to total lung capacity, okay? And uh, they have the intrapleural pressure here. And what they've done is they've said that from here, to here represents your compliance. <clears throat> so this is not fully understanding how the experiment works. Remember what I said, that we're looking at two cycles. We're looking at inspiration and we're looking at expiration. When you're looking at inspiration, you're looking at the change from FRC to tidal volume. In other words, from here to here. And so the, the change in pressure is not from here to here. The change in pressure is from here to here. This is for a static compliance curve, okay? This is your change in volume. This is your change in pressure. So this is incorrect. If they, if they wanted to, um, if they wanted to show that this compliance was a static compliance. This is how you need to draw it. And I can tell you why, I, when I saw this, it, this, I knew that this was wrong, okay? The premise of one of the key concepts is that static compliance is always more than dynamic. And if you have a, this a graph here representing static compliance, so if this is saying that this is static compliance, what does dynamic compliance look like? Is done, so dynamic compliance will be pretty much a flat line. And that makes absolutely no sense at all. <clears throat> so you can see why chambers, and, and there's so many, um, resources which keep on perpetuating this incorrect diagram which is why it's so confusing and the other thing which i disliked about this superimposing it that you're starting from this point here this is part of the expiratory cycle okay and remember that when we're looking at inspiration and expiration you've got hysteresis so at, at FRC, you don't actually start from this point here. Remember that at FRC, you actually start when your intrapleural pressure is minus five. This is for lung. And so the diagram should actually look like this, not from here to here. So this is a tidal volume uh, breath. And when we've got a tidal volume breath, remember to measure compliance is at points of no flow. So um, it's at N inspiratory and N expiratory. And from here to here, it's not static. It's dynamic, okay? <clears throat> yes, I agree that um, if you had a pause, what would happen is this would drop here and then you would have something like this. And therefore, from here to here, that would be static. This is to explain what I mean by um, the peak pressures as well as the plateau pressures. <clears throat> so static compliance always has to be greater than dynamic compliance. And this section here, so static compliance following an N inspiratory pause, the plateau pressure is recorded. Again, so this is the pressure time curve. Pmax is 
Pmax is here, and this P2 is your plateau pressure. And you've delivered your tidal volume from here to here. So now you have your inspiratory pause. And for your inspiratory pause, you, your, your, your volume doesn't change. Your volume stays the same, okay? And then what you'll see on this graph here, if you have a spirometry um, on your anesthetic machine, again, remember that your volume doesn't change, but your pressure drops. So you see your pressure dropping? So your pressure drops to here, and then after that, you come down. So let me label this graph so that it fits in with this one here. So let's say zero and tidal volume here is um, 800 mils. Hypothetically, let's say your um, this represents a second of inspiration, and often inspiratory pause, you'll often have it at 0.3 seconds, okay? Which means that your inspiratory flow right here is 800 mils per second. And you can see that once your tidal volume is delivered, you stop inspiratory flow, okay? But you don't have expiration yet. So that when you look at this graph here, this graph will come up and meet this point here, okay? And then you have your inspiratory pause, and at your inspiratory pause, you'll see your pressure drop, and that's your pressure dropping here. And then after that, you have expiration. So from here, you have expiration. And so from here to here is your dynamic compliance. From here to here is your static compliance. Thank <laughs> you.